It's been a while since I did one for the Reaper kids, but being that Reaper is a huge part of my life, it was time. I want to dig into some of my favorite tools in Reaper and open a discussion in the comments about Reaper tips that might have changed things for the better for you somehow. I love knowing that the underdog of a Daw Reaper is finally getting its praise for being the hidden powerhouse that it is. By the end of this episode, you'll have picked up a few things that help Reaper stand out from its competitors. If nothing else, you'll appreciate what could be done with this DAW if you were going to apply it. So what's happening fam? Miami here with JST and I'm honestly so Reaper that my Instagram tag is still evaluating. That was good. How I snagged that, I don't know, but hopefully you aren't still evaluating Reaper or this channel. Hit that subscribe button and notification bell, and I might just stop pausing five seconds randomly and holding up your workflow. On the contrary, today I'm all about speeding up your workflow, so let's get into what I consider to be some of the most useful features of Reaper outside of a bunch of memorized key commands. This might just win you over if you're contemplating switching from another DAW. One of my favorite tips, the plugin Mix knob. This is a feature that should be in every major DAW, but it isn't for whatever reason. It gives each plugin its own specific mix knob so that you can blend in the amount of the effect you want from each VST. It can be extremely useful on bus comps, but we're going to test it out on a vocal here with Howard Benson Vocals. So let's say that there's a plugin that I really like what it's doing, but I'd like to dial it back a bit. Billy Jean in my blue jeans, beat it like the By using this mix knob in the top right corner, I'm allowed to set that to where I want it to be, getting the effect from the plugin that I have, and I can do this individually on any plugin that's inside of my chain. Extremely useful. Billie Jean in my blue jeans, beat it like the 80s thriller, silly me, she's a groupie, she thinks I'm a... Sounds pretty great right around there, and uh, it also shows just how powerful this plugin is doing <laughs> pretty much covering the whole chain here. The crazy thing about this feature is that it would be near impossible to achieve the same results without it. But on to the next tip, recording and streaming your DAW audio. Have you ever run into an issue of trying to record your DAW audio, but you get confused by the way that you need to route it? Or you might even be thinking of streaming, but can't get everything working seamlessly without quality loss. Uh, more on that in a minute. This is actually a plugin called Reastream, which can be used with any DAW that allows you to send signals out to be recorded or streamed with third-party software like OBS. It's pretty much what I use all the time when I do my screen shares. Check it out. So the way that you're gonna wanna do this is add it to the end of your master chain. And I'll be using OBS with this. We're gonna send this out local broadcast. Let's play back the audio here. Notice how we can see the level here, which is being sent out to the other, which is receiving it, which is an OBS. And all you have to do is set that up in OBS to receive it. And now you're going to get all the audio coming out of your DAW. On to the next, mixing multiple sessions at once. This has been one of the biggest improvements to my workflow ever. Reaper gives you the ability to open and work in a bunch of sessions at once, but they work seamlessly together. How do I explain what I'm trying to say? Let's say you had some settings in one session, but you wanted them in another. You can drag and drop them into each other. You could send the audio out of the master of a track in one session and be recording it in another. All the while, they just sit in little tabs on your screen. So let me show you how simple this is. You literally open a new project tab, and from here, you can either start a new project or you can open an entire project and start mixing from there. As you can see, I'm working on a ton of different projects from all over tons of different genres, and none of them interfere with each other. When I switch from one project to the next, the other projects go into the background, so I haven't noticed any spike in my CPU from doing it this way. I've been able to mix entire albums this way, and that's if I don't want to put them all in the same session, which Reaper is also capable of doing uh, because of its low CPU use. But yeah, great way to be able to interact with all of your tracks at the same time. Number four, routing. 
anything can be routed simply in Reaper, unlike other DAWs, but the ability to route by dragging is my favorite. Of course, there are folders and subfolders, which are also drag and drop, but check out the way that side chaining can be made simple in this example. So in side chaining, you're going to want to add the side chain to whichever thing you want to duck. In this case, we're gonna do the base. And then we're going to route from the kick to go here, but instead of doing anything fancy, you just grab the route button here and you drag and drop it onto there. And now it will side chain the kick and the base. This next one is something people ask about all the time, Reaper themes. Yes, Reaper skins and Reaper themes. One of the coolest applications I've seen applied to a doll, the ability to customize the way that it looks. I bring this up because people are always so worried about switching DAWs because they're so comfortable with how theirs looks and the shortcuts. But one of the beauties of Reaper is you can change the shortcuts to mimic the one in your old DAW as well as the way that it looks. Take a look for yourself. So if you've ever opened Reaper before, this is the default theme that most people are familiar with. Uh, you know, nothing too crazy. But if you want to switch to another DAW even, this is one of my favorite Pro Tools themes. They have multiples of these that you can download. I'll put that in the description. And the one that everyone's always asking us for that's used in our examples, Smooth 6. And I will say that this looks a little bit better on Mac than it does on Windows for whatever reason, but still pretty cool. So I would suggest if you're switching from another DAW, all you have to do is just change out and find the theme that will help you adjust. On to number six, making videos in Reaper. Now, the first thing I'm gonna mention is obviously you can do this in video editing software, but not everyone has that at their fingertips. But a lot of people don't know that just wanna upload a song somewhere with an image like YouTube is you can do all of this inside of Reaper with no worries. Okay, and all you need to do this is to add a track or control T you're then going to drag an image onto this track. I'm gonna grab something from my desktop really quick. We're gonna do this thing where we don't ask why Miami has a random picture of SpongeBob. And yeah, this is looping the item source. We're going to change that right here. And you're going to make this as long as the track is itself so that when you bounce this, um, it's there for the whole time. Now you can do this with multiple pictures as well. So you can create kind of a collage or montage or slideshow, whatever kind of thing you want to do. You're going to change this down here where it's usually on wave. You're going to change this to video FFmpeg here. Change the format to MKV and 24-bit uh, because that's what the song is. And then just render. And now you're going to have a video that has your song and whatever images you have there. It really is a one-stop shop for all things. Don't expect yourself to go make the next Avatar movie in here, but if you're in a pinch and don't wanna waste your time with another software, eh, this will have you covered. On to tip number seven, Reaper actions and SWS extensions. I remember before getting Reaper that there was a way to customize basically every action that I wanted to do which made me switch. Macros are on a whole different level. I was looking for something along the lines of a batch commander in terms of customization, and I was much more pleased with what Reaper had to offer me. Rendering by region. This goes for all people that make libraries or are interested in the idea of doing so. The way that Reaper is set up to handle file naming for samples is otherworldly. Its use of folders makes this the ideal DAW to create libraries with for all of my contact instrument makers out there. So this is a project that is separated into regions. And if I wanted to bounce them all individually for let's say a sample library, when I go to render and see, see 900 some odd files, you can separate by the file name here. So it's going to name them first by the track, whatever you have the number for the track, then by the parent track, which would be what folder they're all inside of, and then by the region, whichever you have that name to, so that when you set it up in a program like Contact to read it, everything will be organized from the second that you hit render here. And that's why most people make their sample libraries inside of Reaper. So let's go over all of this one more time. Quick routing, Rea stream or recording or streaming your DAW, multiple session mixing, 
rendering regions, mix knobs on plugins, scripts and SWS extensions, and of course, making videos in Reaper. There are tools here that might not ever be implemented into another DAW again. I always appreciate Reaper because it put the power in the hands of the user, no matter how ridiculous the user task may be. It's been a few years since I've made the complete switch to Reaper, but with new features constantly being added and scripts being made as we speak, I'm pretty sure they can consider me a customer for life. If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, you only have to do it one time. And tap that bell for notifications so when a video drops, you know the location. Until next time, I am out of here. Mic drop, <laughs> except as engineers we know, I never really dropped this thing because, yeah, that's just one of those times. <laughs> Later.